Welcome to Objective 1.2, Managing Workbook Review. In this video, we'll find out how to restrict editing, protect your workbook structure, encrypt your workbook with a password, manage your workbook versions, and configure formula calculations. Okay, let's get started. Excel's worksheet protection feature allows you to prevent anyone from changing anything in your workbook. This can be from a single cell to an entire workbook. There are two techniques for protecting cells. The first one is protection formatting. Here's where you can unlock cells. You want to allow editing and lock the other cells. The other one is protect a range with a password. You can use this technique to protect one or more ranges with a password and then specify which users are able to edit the range. Cells are locked with their formulas visible by default. However, Excel does not actually lock the cells until the worksheet protection is turned on. Here are three possibilities when setting up your worksheet protection formatting. You can protect every cell in the worksheet, unlock certain cells, or lock only specific cells. To protect every cell in your worksheet, leave the formatting as it is, and turn on worksheet protection. To unlock worksheet cells, select the cells you want to unlock. Then right click, select Format Cells. In the Protection tab, uncheck the box. To lock only certain cells in your worksheet, select all the cells and right click. Then select Format Cells and on the Protection tab, uncheck the locked cells box. You can then select the cells you want locked and do the same. Right click, format cells, in the protection tab, lock those cells by checking the box. At this point you can also hide your formulas by checking the hide formulas checkbox. To protect a range of cells with a password, click on the review tab. In the Protect group, select Allow Users to Edit Ranges. In the Allow Users to Edit Range dialog box, click New. This will open up the New Range dialog box. You can then add a title or a name to your range. And then enter or select the range you want to protect. You can then add a password. You will need to re-enter your password once you are done. If you want your password requirements to apply only to specific users or groups, click the Permissions button. In the Permissions dialog box, add the user or the groups. You can then edit the range without password permissions by selecting Allow or Deny and then press OK. You can then click the Protect Sheet button to activate protection or you will need to open the Protect Sheet dialog box. You can do this by going to the Review tab. In the Permissions group, click Protect Sheet. In the Protect Sheet dialog box, enter a password to protect the sheet and then press OK. If you entered a password, you'll need to re-enter the password and then click OK to continue working on the worksheets. Now that we know how to protect the individual cells and cell ranges, let's look at how to protect the workbook structure. When you protect your workbook structure, Excel disables most worksheet-related commands on the ribbon. For example, on the Home tab, on the Format menu, some commands have been greyed out or are unavailable. Most commands on the Tab menu are also disabled. Excel also keeps the Scenario Manager from creating a summary report.
when your worksheet structure has been protected. To protect your workbook structure, go to the Review tab. In the Protect group, select Protect Workbook. This will di display the Protect Workbook Structure dialog box. Make sure that the structure box has been checked. Then you can enter an optional password in the Password text box and press OK. If you specified a password, re-enter the password to confirm and then press OK. Your worksheet structure has now been protected. Encrypting your workbook with a password. If your workbook contains confidential information, protecting cells or sheets might not be enough. For a higher level of security, you can encrypt your workbook with a password. To encrypt your workbook with a password, go to File, Info, select Protect Workbook, and then click Encrypt with Password. You can then enter a password and press OK. You'll have to confirm your password and press OK again. From now on, if anybody wants to open the workbook, they'll have to know the password. Managing Workbook Versions If you have accidentally overwritten an important range, or if you have deleted some data, there are a few ways you can recover it. If your error was your most recent action, you can use the Undo button to reverse it. If your error was not your most recent action, you can repeatedly use the Undo button until your mistake has been reversed. If you haven't saved your workbook since you made the error and you don't need to preserve any other changes, you can close your workbook without saving it. There is also an alternative. If you have Excel's auto recovery running, Excel is continuously monitoring your work for changes. If Excel sees that you have unsaved work when the auto recovery intervals end, Excel will save a copy of your workbook. This means that you can reverse an error without losing too much work by reverting it to an earlier auto-saved version. To revert to an earlier version of a workbook, go to File, and on the Info page under Manage Workbook, click the auto-save version you want to revert back to. If this is the version you want to recover, display the Save As page to save the workbook under a different file name or a different folder. Otherwise, you can return from the most recent version by clicking Restore in the information bar. To configure auto recovery, go to File, Options. On the Save page, select Auto Recovery Information every X minutes. You can use the arrows to set the auto recovery intervals in minutes. To have Excel preserve the most recent version of unsaved workbooks, select Keep the last autosave versions and then click OK. Configuring formula calculation options. Excel automatically calculates a formula when you confirm its entry and the program normally recalculates existing formulas whenever the data changes. This works really well for small worksheets, but it can slow you down if you have a complex model, which can take several minutes to recalculate. To turn off this automatic recalculation, Excel gives you two options. You can use the commands on the Calculation option menu, on the Formulas tab, or you can go to File, Options, Formulas, and then Calculation Options. You will then be presented with three calculation options. Automatic, which is the default mode, and means that Excel recalculates formulas as soon as you enter them, and as soon as data changes. Automatic except for data tables. In this mode, Excel recalculates all formulas automatically except for those associated with the data table. This is a good choice 
if your worksheet includes massive data tables that could slow down the recalculation pro process. Manual. You can select this mode to stop Excel from recalculating any formulas until you either manually recalculate or save the workbook. You can also control various options for iterative calculations. Iterative calculations are calculations that begin with a guess at the solution. You plug a guess into the formula and get a new solution. Then you plug a solution into the formula and then keep repeating the process. Each time you plug a new solution into the formula, it is called an iteration. The entire process is called an iterative calculation. Iterative calculations are turned off by default because they create a circular reference, which is normally an error in Excel. You can also tell Excel to stop calculating after a predetermined number of iterations. Management of iterative calculations offers two controls. Maximum iterations. This value is the number of iterations after which Excel must stop the calculation if it has not converged on a solution. The default is 100. Maximum change is the value that Excel uses to determine whether the iterative calculation has converged on a solution. By default, the value is 0 0.001. You can enable iterative calculations by checking the box. In the maximum iterations box, enter or select the number of iterations Excel can try before it must stop the calculation. In the maximum changes box, enter the value that you want Excel to use as a threshold. When performing an iterative calculation, Excel stops the calculation as soon as it hits the maximum iteration or the maximum change value, depending on which comes first. If you select Manual and want to run your calculations automatically when you save your file, select the Recalculate Workbook Before Saving checkbox. To manually recalculate a single formula, select the cell that contains the formula, then click in the formula bar and press Enter. To manually recalculate formulas in a selected range, press Ctrl F Go to the Find and Replace, enter an equal sign in both the Find What's and Replace What's boxes, and then click Replace All. To manually recalculate formulas in only one active worksheet, go onto the Formulas tab and click Calculate Sheet. To manually recalculate formulas in every open worksheet. On the Formulas tab in the Calculations section, click Calculate Now. And to manually recalculate every formula in every open worksheet, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and F9. Well that's all for Objective 1.2. We looked at how to restrict editing, protect our workbook structure, encrypt our workbook with a password, manage our workbook versions, and we configured formula calculations. In the next video, we'll create custom data formats. We'll populate cells using the advanced full series options, and we'll configure data validation. I'm Deborah Gray, and I look forward to hosting you in the next video.